Hi, I'm Charity Pepizani. Welcome to ATV News. First up tonight, we have an announcement to make. This will be the last ATV News broadcast in its current format. From Monday, we'll be revamping our channel and generating new ideas for programming, and we want these ideas to come from you. Please get in touch on our ATV Facebook page or send us your ideas to our email address at news at afromedia.org. We want to know what you want to see and what you don't want to see or any other comments you may have. We will still have all our other content such as music videos and you say. Plus, in the coming weeks, we'll be showing short examples of ideas we have for new shows. And this is where we really need to hear from you guys. This channel is being built by you for you. We want new ideas, so please let us have your thoughts. We appreciate all the support you've given ATV, and we trust you stick with us. The future is bright. But for now, it's Friday evening, and these are your top stories. Zimbabwe has been asked to appear at the Vatican City to answer questions on why it still maintains the death penalty. Zimbabwe is one of 20 countries around the world that still maintains the death penalty in its Dutch's books. The Minister of Home Affairs, Teresa Mocconi, will be attending the meeting in Rome to hear the Vatican's view on the death penalty and argue the case for Zimbabwe. The Catholic Church has been calling for the abolition of the death penalty around the world and in countries that the church has a presence. Mrs. Maconi will be in Rome between 29th and the 30th of November. Zimbabwe still maintains the death penalty, although a proposed new constitution for the country would, abolish, would be abolished in respect of women, children under the age of 18, and senior citizens aged above 70. Staying in Zimbabwe, and it has emerged that Vice President Landa John Nkomo is fighting for his life. Rumors have been circulating this week that Nkomo had passed away, but his son confirmed that he's still alive, although seriously ill. Mr. Jabulani Nkomo said the family was annoyed by the rumors of his father's death and may consider legal, legal action against those reporting such stories. This is not the first time that rumors of Mkomo's demise have surfaced. In October last year, social networks were awash with reports that Vice President, who is on treatment for cancer, had died. His family had to set the record straight and announce that he was alive and in Cape Town, South Africa, receiving treatment. In Zambia, officers from the ruling Patriotic Front and the Opposition Party for National Development have clashed at a parliament building. The incident happened when suspected PF officers allegedly stoned UNPD members who went to parliament to present a petition aimed at stopping the application of 1.4 billion kwacha towards the fifth president's retirement home. Movi TV has more on the incident. These placards have been displayed only for one reason. This is a move denouncing the Patriotic Front PF government's allocation of huge sums of money towards the free president's retirement home. The planned demonstration at Parliament building was at some point disturbed by the confusion that erupted. The United Party for National Development UPND cadres and the alleged Patriotic Front PF cadres clashed at Parliament building. The UPND supporters disclosed that the alleged PF cadres followed them to Parliament where they had gone to present a petition to the August House to deter the unlawful allocation of 1.4 billion kwacha meant to construct a house for the first president. The fracas was only controlled by police officers who were sustained to control the UPND members who sang solidarity songs for their party president Haga in the Hichilema. And UPND Secretary General Winston Chiwe said the aim of their party was to present a petition in a peaceful manner and not to engage in any form of confrontation. Mr. Chiwe added that the UPND is uncomfortable over the allocation of the 1.4 billion kwacha, stating that at present there is no faith president who has retired. For 
permanent house for the fifth president of the Republic of Zambia, who does not exist, and that is illegal, and this is the petition that we are presenting before you. And when contacted, police spokesperson Elizabeth Kangela said police had picked up some people over the fracas that occurred at Parliament building, but could not confirm who the people were. Instance of confrontation and sometimes resulting to death has increasingly become a source of concern, and what has transpired at Parliament building surely needs to be avoided. Grace McConnell Winda, Movie TV News in Lusaka. In other Zambian news, a 32-year-old man has been jailed for stabbing his father to death in Kitwe. Kenny Kalenja was, was detained under the president's pleasure, meaning that the president will be making observations and recommendations on his punishment. In September last year, Mr. Kalenja stabbed his father, 58-year-old Robinson Kalenja. Kalenja's brother Felix testified that the family were trying to take Kenny to prayers as they feared for his mental stability. The family believed that Kenny was demon possessed, but when they tried to take him to prayers, he tried to stab one of his brothers but missed and stabbed his father, killing him instantly. Now it's time to cross over to Liam and Michael in a special location who are looking forward to this week's English football fixtures. Thank you Charity. You join us today at a very cold Etihad Stadium. We're here outside Manchester City's ground in East Manchester ahead of their home tie with Everton. Everton of course doing very well in the league at the moment although they've been on a bit of a poor run of form recently with a few draws when they should have won overall but they did draw with Arsenal in the week and again it's that man Mauro Fellaini who will be looking to cause trouble for the champions on Saturday. City for their part are close to their rivals at the top of the league. <clears throat> that draw in their last game, on the last weekend game against Chelsea, gave them a bit of room to United at the top, but they got back to winning ways against Wigan, with we're all talking about that fantastic goal by James Milner. And as we've said before on ATV, City are starting to put a little bit of form together, so they're looking good. Tomorrow is a home game and City should hope to win it, but Everson will provide a real test. I'm joined by my colleague Michael Mambo, as always. So you've got your coat on, Michael. It's a bit cold for you, right? Yeah, it is very, very cold. Uh, I wish I was in Africa right now. But is, does this just show your dedication to your job? Definitely, definitely. We're here, as you can see, at the lovely Etihad Stadium. I uh, wish you guys back home could be with us. Although they're probably having a, a nicer time in the sun. They're having a nicer time in the sun, but it's football. Yeah, enough this, of this weather, this is chat. What it is all We've about. got football to get down to. City, Everton, what do you think? I think it's going to be a 1-1 one -one draw. 1-1 one -one draw? Why? Because both teams have got powerful individuals who can change the game at any time. Everton are more of a team team, whereas City, they've got one or two brilliant players who at the moment are just finding form. So it's going to be an interesting match. OK, well, just to ask you about the Everton manager, David Moyes, I read an article this week that said he would have to be considered one of the best Premier League managers that there has been. How much has he done for Everton and how much is he, does he deserve respect? He's, he's done quite a lot considering the resources available at his disposal. At, at the end of the day, football is about 12 play, 11 players. 12 plus, got that right. 12 plus the coach, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's about what you have at your disposal and how best you can utilize it. He's not had the resources of uh, Alex Ferguson. He's not had the resources that Chelsea has, nor Mancini, nor Arsenal, but he's managed to be at the top. Now, it is incredibly cold here. How do you think City's vast amount of foreign stars are going to cope? Are they going to be wearing gloves and neck warmers and all that stuff? They will. Some of them will probably be having gloves for the first time in the season, but this is what they're paid to do. 300,000 a week, I'll wear those any day. And we're, of course, not given gloves as part of our wages, so we just got to make do. Now, what about City's rivals? We came last week from Manchester United, and we told you midweek that they went back to the top of the league with a bit of a nervy win against West Ham. They're playing against Reading, who are, of course, second from bottom. It's about time we saw a performance from United where they banged four or five goals past the team, isn't it? It is about time, but they don't have that momentum at the moment. But knowing United, anything can happen. OK, and we've heard today that the good news, a real boost for United and their fans, is that club captain Nemanja Vidic 
will be returning. Probably not going to make it for the game with Reading, but he should make it for the European tie against Cluj in midweek. So Vidic could provide a real boost for United as they aim to keep their top spot. That's it from us here at the Etihad Stadium, a very cold Etihad Stadium. But we'll be back on Monday with a new feature that we'd like your opinion on called Sports Corner, where we'll round up the whole of the weekend's action. Bye for now. And the final photo of the day for this week goes to Muchedzi Abel for this great graduation picture. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed watching ATV News. Thank you so much and have a good evening.